Hello, welcome to this week's training video for the CFL. Before we begin, I want to remind everybody that these videos are for training purposes only. They are not meant to demean, belittle, or show up any opponents, players, coaches, fans, officials, mascots, clock operators, chain crew, or any game personnel, anyone involved with the game. That will go ahead and get started with play number one. Uh, this is a potential targeting play. Just want to review the quick rule on targeting. We have two different rules. Rule 913, using the crown of the helmet with forceful contact. Or 914, a hit in the head or neck area on a defenseless player. Understand the difference. If you use the crown of the helmet, that hit can be anywhere in the body. The chest, thighs, back, head, anywhere. If they are using their helmet as a weapon, then that can be deemed as targeting. Reminder, we do have to have an indicator, such as an upward thrust, a forearm, a dip of the head, etc. For 914, it's a hit on a defenseless player, such as a quarterback in the act of passing, a receiver in the act of catching, uh, etc. You would have to look up the rules of a defenseless player. It is possible to have targeting under both rules on the same play. In this case, we see the defender has dipped his head, clearly an indicator to be potential using the crown of the helmet. It's also a receiver in the act of catching a pass, so if he gets hit in the head or neck area, even without the crown, a forearm, a shoulder, anything like that, then we could have targeting as well. Now in this case, we just have a hard hit, and he gets sandwiched in between two defenders. It's actually not uh, targeting, but we do need to understand the rule. A very hard physical hit and just because he may get hit in the uh, up in the, up high, if there's not an indicator and it's not intentional, or it's not uh, shouldn't say intentional, but not with force, then we don't have targeting. It is possible to have a personal foul and an unnecessary roughness without targeting as well. Okay, so good close play to look at. Defenders, pick your head up. This is for your own safety. Using the dipping your head like that, you could get seriously injured. Okay, play number two is a good job by this crew to recognize they misenforced the penalty and uh, attempted to get it right. We've got the ball snapped from the 46, and we have a legal forward pass play. Ball is caught right about the line of scrimmage, and we get down to the 36. Okay, we've got a hold by the defense there towards the end. Now, all fouls by the defense on a running play can be added to the end of the run, but... By rule, all fouls by the defense on legal forward pass plays are previous spot fouls. So the defense, I'm sorry, the offense would either need to decline the penalty if they want the yardage, or they can go back and reinforce or enforce the penalty from the previous spot. But they don't get both. In this case, the run ended at 36. We went ahead and gave them 10 more yards, and they were at the 26. Good job by the crew to recognize something was wrong. And they recognize we have a legal forward pass play, so we should be uh, going back to the previous spot. The unfortunate thing is we didn't quite get the previous spot right. Remember, we snapped at the 46. We are now snapping from the 38. So we just enforced an 8-yard penalty instead of a 10-yard penalty. The good news is it was an automatic first down, so we got that right. Offense probably doesn't know the difference in the fact that they've got the first down, so they're happy. Little things like this can make a difference. So not just line of scrimmage officials, but the entire crew should be responsible for remembering down, distance, and previous spot, or spot where the ball is being snapped from. Okay, play three. It's a good job of the quarterback moving his, uh, his receivers off the line. Line of scrimmage officials, we don't want to split hairs here like on the bottom. There's clearly a gap between the receiver and the tight end, so we would make the receiver off the line. We call that the blade of grass theory. If you can fit a blade of grass between them, we're going to make them on. However, let's pretend that he is covering the tight end. If he's covering the tight end and you rule him covered, this is not a foul at this time unless we have a legal forward pass downfield and that tight end were to go downfield. Okay, but... As of now, he's off. But if he were covering him, 
The tight end goes downfield. Now, the quarterback does a nice job here of scooting the, the receiver off the line to give you a clear indication that he is off the line. So we have no issues here. Okay, but if he were covered, if the tight end goes downfield, we still don't have a foul for an ineligible downfield unless we have a legal forward pass. In this case, the quarterback rolls out and steps out, so we wouldn't have anything, even if that tight end was covered and he went downfield. It's just a running play. Now, if the tight end is covered, goes downfield, and we have a legal forward pass, then we would have an ineligible downfield. If he happens to touch that pass, then we would also have illegal touching, which is also a loss of down, which is a bigger penalty than the ineligible downfield. So we just got to understand the rules and uh, how we're going to work that and the philosophy of making this guy off the line. Again, a tight end covered is not a foul unless we have other elements to make that a foul. It's just a good play to learn from and uh, think about as line of scrimmage officials especially. Play four, uh, this is a very nice job by this official on the new mechanic. Remember on first downs, we do not stop the clock. We just, uh, it's just like the NFL. First down, we keep the ball, we keep it rolling. If he goes out of bounds, we'll stop the clock for him going out of bounds. But as the ball comes in, we're going to wind the clock again. The exception to that is under two minutes. And under two minutes, we would, uh, if, if there's a foul or offense is awarded a uh, first down by penalty, then we would uh, start it on the snap. Otherwise, uh, it's no rule has changed. We're going to be on the ready for play for under two minutes. For outside of two minutes, it's not going to stop at all unless he goes out. We'll wind it right away. In this case, he's tackled in. So we give the 40-second uh, play clock, indicating the runner is down, and we call the chain crew down, meaning first down. Play five, that's a really tight play. We call illegal forward pass here, and line of scrimmage officials don't split hairs. Make him clearly over the line of scrimmage where we can see daylight between his rear end and the uh, line of scrimmage. Ball snapped just shy of the 30-yard line, so about the 29 and a half or so. We see him right, right at about where the line of scrimmage is snapped. Then again, it's hard from this angle. You're on the line, so give you the benefit of the doubt just very very tight though we want to see him clearly over the line of scrimmage where there's no question and this is just a very very tight play so don't split hairs make him clearly over and you're going to be right most of the time okay play six it's a very nice job of mechanics by this line of scrimmage official when the ball is snapped between the 3 and the goal line, both officials are going to get back to the goal line. But when it's snapped between the 3 and the 10, the head line judge has the goal line, which is at the bottom of the screen here. So that means the line judge up at the top has to hold the line of scrimmage, even though the goal line may be threatened. In this case, we have a screen pass. So once he recognizes that the ball has been caught behind the line, and we have a forward pass, that means the offense cannot throw another forward pass unless they want to commit a foul for a, an illegal forward pass. So once the ball is caught behind the line of scrimmage, uh, it actually behind, doesn't, behind, doesn't matter if it's behind the line. Once the ball is caught on a legal forward pass, he can now retreat back and help with the bigger threat, which is the goal line. He's not anchored to that line of scrimmage anymore because the threat of a quarterback crossing the line is gone. Uh, threat of ineligibles downfield are also removed so there's no reason for him to be anchored to that goal the line of scrimmage he does a nice job of retreating back to help in case that goal line is threatened runner gets out and he's in very good position to go ahead and spot the ball again very nice mechanics by this uh, line of scrimmage official Play seven, this is a good job of substitution mechanics by the referee, center judge, and line judge. We have a receiver that steps onto the field up here at the top. Line judge goes into the iron cross, lets the referee know that uh, we're in a substitution mechanic. When he opens up the window, center judge goes running in. Remember that when we go into the iron cross, 
once the referee institutes the substitution mechanic or once the referee goes up with it, the rest of us do not need to hold that iron cross. Once the referee does it, the rest of us can drop it as long as the center judge or umpire recognizes. In this case, the center judge does a good job of hustling up there, getting in the middle of the center, the receiver and the or the quarterback in the center. And the whole point of this substitution is this guy up at the top of the screen slipped onto the field and is unrecognized by the defense. So the referee is going to turn and face the offensive sideline at the defensive sideline and let him let them know that we're in a substitution mechanic. You have three seconds to begin the substitution process. In other words, start initiating your defender to go in and uh, match up. Note to the offense and the rest of the crew, actually, in order for this to be a legal sub, he needs to get to the numbers. Okay, we're not going to split hairs, but he has to make an attempt to at least get out here where people recognize him. When he stays over by the sideline like that, that's the whole point of the substitution rule is he is trying to deceive the opponents, slip onto the field, being unnoticed, and then run down the sideline, hopefully unmatched for a touchdown. But because we went into substitution, he's telling them they've got a match up. Defense recognizes, and he moves over. And he's able to match up. Good job by this crew uh, to recognize substitution and prevent a cheap touchdown. Offense doesn't like it. They want to roll. But when they sub late like that, that's what we're there for. And if the clock were to run out, the play clock, uh, were to run out, we would actually have a delay game on the offense. That is on them when they substitute that late. Okay, play eight. This is a receiver that uh, starts on the line of scrimmage and goes in motion from the line of scrimmage. Remember, in order to go in motion, they must be a back, or they must clearly be one yard off the line of scrimmage. So if he wants to go in motion from here, he would actually have to step off the line, pause for a second, and then he can go in motion. The other option on this is if he shifts across the formation. In that case, he would not have to make himself a back. He could just simply sprint across the formation and set over here on the line. As long as he came set for one second, that would be considered a shift. But in this case, he realizes he's supposed to go in motion and he's waiting for the call from the quarterback to go in motion. When he finally does, the ball is snapped. So he's not shifting. He's supposed to be a motion man. The problem is he goes in motion from the line of scrimmage. In order to go in motion, you must be off the line of scrimmage by a yard and clearly a back. Okay. So good job by this line of scrimmage official recognizing that we have an illegal motion. However, by rule, it is a live ball foul at the snap. So he could reset. Okay, now odds are he's not going to reset. We know he's going in motion. That was just, uh, he, he didn't know where he was going. So we don't want to split hairs, but if we put him off the line of scrimmage, we have five in the backfield. So we can't do that. We've got to put him on the line of scrimmage to make him legal to start the play. So that's a good job there. However, once he goes in motion, again, it's live. Unless your supervisor says to shut that down. If you do shut it down as a false start, nothing is going to be hurt because anything the offense gains now is going to come back anyway. The only issue is if you shut it down, you take away an opportunity for the defense. But at the end of the day, shutting it down is not going to be uh, a bad thing. So just check with what your supervisor wants overall. By rule, it's a live ball foul. Philosophically, I can understand why we'd shut it down. Okay, play nine. We were a fumble on this. This is a quick pass, and he the receiver doesn't even really take a step, and the ball is out. Something this quick, without him able to regain his himself, protect himself, make a football move, a step, uh, something to indicate that he's... Uh, running the ball and has possession. We want to make these incomplete. You see the ball is right there already out with, with the arrow there. Pass this quick. 
and the ball coming out is incomplete every time. We don't want any cheap turnovers. He was not able to really even protect himself or do anything. That ball's already out. So make those incomplete. Get in the habit of watching film. See those quick uh, possession changes like that. They're almost always going to be incomplete. Okay, play 10 and 11. Last two are going to be a couple of leaping plays. This is a attempt of leaping over the shield on a punt play. Now, on the right as the ball is about to be punted or kicked, he's actually still on the ground, has not leapt. But the foul would occur is if he goes over the blockers, over the shield, and leaps up in the air. Typically, we want to see this where he's already in the air and the blocker kind of flips him up over. And it's a safety issue. Uh, in this case, the blocker's hitting him, and he's still just on the ground or, or barely off the ground. And so, in my opinion, I don't think this is big enough for a, a leaping over the shield foul. I think it's a correct no call by the referee and center judge. However, again, defenders, you have two options. Go through the gap or don't leap over the shield. You can leap through the gap. You can run through the gap. But if you go over the blockers, um, you're risking being hurt. And if you're in the air over the top and get hit, you're going to probably get called for leaping over the shield. So, I, again, I think this is a good, correct no call. But understand uh, it is a safety issue, and that would be an automatic first down for the kicking team. Previous spot foul. Okay, very last play. Uh, this is a good job by understanding the uh, rule of leaping on a field goal or scrimmage play, uh, scrimmage kick play. In order to leap to block a kick here, these players have to be within one yard of the line of scrimmage and they have to be stationary. They can't be in motion. They can't be shifting around. In this case, he's moving and he's not within a yard of the line of scrimmage. So he's, he's illegal in both ways. The third piece to that is if they're going to uh, jump over the pile there or leap, they have to actually go in between players. They cannot go over the top of the offensive players. So he can't jump directly over the center to try to block the kick. He would have to actually shoot the gap between the center and the guard. But in order to do that, he has to be stationary and within one yard of the line of scrimmage. Also, quick note, we have the center judge out uh, in the new mechanics. The center judge should be under the uh, in the defensive backfield with the umpire and the side judge. So we should have... Um, the umpire, and then the center judge, and the side judge. Also, line of scrimmage officials step into the defensive backfield a yard or two to help with that pull and shoot. Okay, again, for leaping like that, he has to do that in the gap. Must be stationary. Good call for leaping. And because leaping is a 15-yard penalty, the kicking team does have the option of having that enforced previous spot and retrying the try at the one-and-a-half-yard line, or they can enforce it on the kickoff, which is going to be the better option here. Right now, normally we wouldn't want the coach out on the field. He was out congratulating his players, high-fiving them, and wasn't talking to the officials. Whitehead happens to ask him his is what he wants on the enforcement while he's there. That's not a big deal. That's a big difference between coaches coming out on the field um, to show us up. So not an issue there. Good job by the crew recognizing the leaping and good job by getting the enforcement right as well. All right, that's going to con conclude week two. Thank you, everybody, for plays you sent in and your hard work on the field. Appreciate everything everybody does. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, give me a call. If not, have great games this weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.